What the happened last night? And if there's one bloke in the F1 world who gets a bit too much unnecessary shtick, it's a man by the name of Herman Tilke, the architect behind every single one of F1's new ventures since the mid-1990s or so. Tilke was Bernie's go-to guy. There's probably a reason. But whenever there's a boring race, all the blame gets laid squarely on Tilke's shoulders. If not, Lewis Hamilton's as well. Because apparently all of his tracks are cookie-cutter designs with runoff areas the size of Canada on each corner. But is it really Tilke's fault? Or do we need to look more at what's happening in the boardrooms of the FIA and Liberty Media as well? In the interview with La Republica, Tilker explained that a lot of the circuit design is due to FIA guidelines that he has to follow to help a circuit attain Grade 1 status with which to be able to hold a Formula 1 Grand Prix. And the FIA's rule books that are actually on the FIA's website, you can download the PDFs and read them at your own leisure, state that the starting grid area must be at least 15 metres wide, or 16. It's one of the two. I should have really looked that up. Either way, the rest of the modern track has to be at least 12 metres wide, and Imola is probably the best example of the track actually bottlenecking towards Turn 1. Unless you're Cameron Roger, in which case it's Turn 2. Those same guidelines say that Turn 1 has to be a certain radius, and the pit lane has to do X, Y and Z. Unless it's career, in which case we'll just lob cars out at the exit of a very, very tight left-hander. Which, in this era of safety and excessive runoff, is totally reasonable, right? Sochi also gets a lot of vitriol directed in its direction, too, but the brief was to fit a racing circuit around the confines of the Winter Olympic Park. You can't just do anything in there. It's not as easy as building a scale electric on the floor of your living room. Tilka had to design the track around the Winter Olympics, and then he had to get the track in afterwards, because the Winter Olympics obviously held the priority at the time. Then there's the so-called butchering of Hockenheim, a track loved by F1 fans as cars blasted their way into the forest at super low downforce settings, which, for about two hours a weekend, made the cars basically become indie cars. Then following the 2000 German Grand Prix where a disgruntled Mercedes employee made his way onto the track, which aggravated security concerns as well as the deluge of rain that appeared midway through the race, and other concerns, the FIA had to cut the circuit down for the 2002 season. And then to add to the issues, the Hockenheim circuit owners sold a portion of the land that the old track was on back to the local government, meaning they couldn't do anything with what was left. And this is a key part to the argument. You can't build on land you don't own. Unless you're the British, obviously. And that messed Tilker's plans up a bit. He wanted to extend the old track up to the spot where Clark was killed so we could have a proper Clark corner with a memorial and other bits and bobs like that, but instead, he had to put turns two and three where they were, and then the long right-hander down to the hairpin, which... It's not really a corner, is it? Any corner where you list lazily to the left or the right isn't actually a corner. Looking at you, Road America. It was joined the dots in the best way possible. And people like to slag it off because I've talked about before F1 fans and their nostalgia, but... I actually quite like the new Hockenheim. Well, I say new. It's 20 years old this year. No, it's not. Uh, 19. You've also got the fact that these modern cars are so heavily reliant on aerodynamic grip that getting them to follow through constant radius corners, well, it's a bit of a ball ache. And I might have to look into this a little deeper because the 2022 cars were supposed to be this season's cars, or this coming season's cars, I should say. If they were smaller and had more mechanical grip, and not chucking out dirty air, then maybe we'd get this closer racing that everyone seems to be wanting. But at the same time, you run into the argument that F1 is focusing too much on entertainment over sport, but that's a discussion for the next video, I think. We can't have 10 red bull rings. It's impossible. It's the same way that Metallica can't make Master of Puppets every album, or Fleetwood Mac making every album just like Rumours. Tilka is just working to a brief from his employer. And well, those employers are Liberty Media, well, FOM, and the FIA. Because the FIA wants the tracks to be safe, and FOM wants people through the gate to make some pure pee. And then Tilka has to then cram what the FIA and the commercial rights owners want into a designated plot of land. And some of these tracks he's got right, so to speak. 
the redesign of the A1 ring, which is what it was called when I was a kid. You got Turkey, Bahrain, the Mercedes Arena at the Nürburgring, which is pretty tricky. You got Sepang, if you ignore that second last corner, Kota, and a couple of others. But then there's Abu Dhabi. But at the same time, some of these classic tracks produce some pretty crap racing too. Barcelona being one. Imola is another. I know what people are going to say, but what about 2005 and 2006? Two races doesn't mean the rest of them are any good. It's the same way that the 2012 Valencia Grand Prix makes everybody forget how crap the others were. So no, I don't think it's entirely Tilka's fault. There are plenty of tracks out there that are fun to drive solo in racing games and simulators that just happen to produce crap racing. Tilka really is just doing his job. It's the FIA and the commercial rights holders whose guidelines and desire for close racing and overtaking in conjunction with regulations on the cars that make these tracks and cars not match up in the way that they necessarily think that these tracks and cars will match up. And like I said, maybe I'll have to delve deeper into it the next time round. Does the quest for entertaining racing every single race do more harm than good? So this is the part where I hand things over to you. Is Tilker at fault or should the FIA be looking for someone new to take over the job of building these new tracks? Leave your thoughts in the comments and, you know, get talking because that's why I do this series and this is one that gets people talking. So if this has got you thinking, then click the thumb up thing and the subscribe button is also there if you want to click that if you're new here. Click the bell as well. Go on. Live a bit. 2021. Massive thanks as always go out to the patrons of this channel who are on your screens right now and if you want to join them or just join in the Discord and Twitter stuff, I'll leave all the links you need in the description box for you. So until next time, I've been Aidan Ward, have a cracking day wherever you live in the world and I'll see you all again soon for another video. So until then, goodbye. That ring light is super bright, I am blind.